What's up, guys? This is the Eric Barber here, and I'm here with Mark live. Uh, he just performed with Cool Keith at the Blind Pig in Ann Arbor. How you doing today, man? Good, good. Nice to nice to see you guys. Thanks for coming out to the show. It was great. Oh yeah, for sure, man. And uh, you know, I really enjoyed your set that you did with uh, Keith. Um, how how was it uh, going up there performing with him? Um, well, me and Keith started. Perf- he put, Keith put me on to start performing in 1997. Mm-hmm. So we go back that far as far as like doing shows together. And he basically, you know, taught me the ropes on how to, you know, acclimate to his show. And kind of we created a chemistry that, you know, it's like a when with Batman and Robin when we're on stage together. Like, so it's always been like, you know, we always tear shit down. I love it. And I could definitely get that energy uh, from you guys tonight as well. And uh, I understand that you guys uh, had a group together called the Analog Brothers. Yes. Um, so if you could go into how that group formed. Um, well, Analog Brothers formed from a guy called Rex Dolby or Rex Roland. And he had a little garage set up in the hood in um, South Central in L.A. And uh, he would pick me up because I was getting into smoking weed and he would sell $5 blunts already pre-rolled. So he'd come pick me up in the morning and we go to his garage and start, you know, making beats and stuff. And then um, when we started, we started creating a little bit of a sound. Like I would sample and then he'd play on top, like just play like his yeah. keyboards. He had like a thousand keyboards. And then when we got, when I had like five beats, I said, now let's call Keith. I said, Keith, we got this thing. Tell me if you like it. He's like, I like it. Let me bring, then he brought his keyboards. So then we're all in there, like every day creating analog brothers. And then he said, yo, let's call this shit analog brothers just out of his head. Cause it was kind of like we were going at the, like the, it was like, you know, we had Robbie analog, not Robbie, but Bobby digital at the time. So we were kind of doing our little kind of alias to that. And, um, and then, uh, we, I, you know, Keith said, once you get ice, so I said, Ice, you know, Keith wants you to be in this crew, Analog Brothers, and Ice, like anything Keith's doing, he's like, y'all, y'all recorded at my house. So we recorded it at the famous crack house, and it was just magic. It was just fun, like all of us, you know, in there just rapping crazy and, you know, with Ice and everything and late night sessions. Yeah, it was dope. For sure, bro. And, you know, looking back on your career, I mean, would you say that was, you know, one of the more pivotal, pivotal moments. Of yeah. Your- because it kind of, it was like, it was real life because we were all friends, like hanging out every day. Like ice was just like the relationship we had, like ice would be like, Hey guys, yo, we at Ralph's. Like and we go hang out at Ralph's and do normal shit. But we were all, you know, Keith was super hot with Dr. Octagon and Ice has always been big with his movies and stuff. So, but we all just friends hanging out every day. So it was real life, like seeing us on the album cover because we would do shit like that, get together, dress up, go out, you know. Yeah. So it was dope that we all happened to know how to rap. No doubt. Yeah. And, you know, when you're talking about, you know, knowing how to rap, I mean, you know, at what age or like when did you uh, really start honing that craft? I think I started fucking around with raps like 16, but I was into rock and roll. So I used to write rock and roll lyrics like he's a wolf screaming lonely in the night when the devil comes again, you know, shit like that in the classroom. Cause like back then, like Motley Crue, um, uh, Twisted Sister, Quiet Riot was big in, you know, my world. I'm 50 years old. So like sure. I go back like, so, um, so I, I was writing rock lyrics and then um, my brother was like, yo, man, you're black, man. You can't be listening to no more rock. He's like, I want you to go to um, you going to stay up tonight and listen to WHBI. You're going to listen to some hip hop. And I stayed up to three in the morning on a school night and my mind was blown. And then like about three years later, um, I was like, I want to rap. And then my brother was like, just call Keith. He's the hottest rapper in New York. He's your cousin, you know, like we're family. Like our fathers came to New York together. So it was like, Keith was like, you want to rap? 
He's like, I'll take you to the radio station tonight. I'm like, I ain't even have one rap. And then he guided us through the whole, our whole career. And I had a group called Raw Breed in the 90s. That was a hardcore kind of Bronx group. And he kind of helped us get on and, you know, basically gave me the cheat sheet. No doubt. And it's really great to see the, your guys' connection has uh, been such a mainstay. Like tonight, uh, I noticed you're also included on a lot of uh, songs off Black Elvis, too. Yeah. Well, me and Keith did the first Black Elvis, the classic Lost in Space. We pr- produced that together. And um, so we just kind of 20 years later just did part two, you know. And, um, you know, even, you know, beats wise, we always had a nice chemistry, like, because I I've, I was always happy he let me do beats with him. So I never told Keith, like, don't play that or don't use that. So we would just do the illest shit because yeah. there's no rules. We just happy to be creating without having the producers like, yo, that's not the right snare or that's not the right shit. We're just doing shit. And he's so prolific. He'd be like, yo, let's go to the studio tonight and lay it. And that's how like KHM and Claiborne family and all those albums came about just kind of every day. That was our routine, just making music. And, you know, and all those records came about from that. Awesome. I love it. And, you know, Mark, speaking of, you know, your career, I mean, what are you most proud of and and your uh, solo work? Um, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm proud of my like my raw breed stuff with my group in the 90s. Like, you know, you know, all the stuff we did and, you know, putting out an album with Warner Brothers and then, you know, my producing stuff, you know, doing beats over the years with, with Keith and you know, other artists and DJ Shock from Rough Riders and doing stuff like that. And um, and then just like me just really pivoting, being able to like kind of pivot from music and, you know, writing TV shows. You know, I wrote Ice Loves Coco for Ice and Coco and, you know, just doing different stuff in music, but, you know, still kind of staying involved in, 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 in like always current with beats and, and, and just, always just have a, a, a dope 16 and, you know, and when Keith puts the bat signal out, you know, we can go do an album tonight, literally like tonight, yeah. 10 songs and it'd be dope. So we're like always like on. So it's kind of like my career is kind of like, I have so many records that I've been a part of and different groups and stuff like, so my contribution to hip hop has been since 93 you know, really hasn't stopped thanks to Keith and Ice-T and, and guys that let me kind of fuck with their careers a little bit. That's awesome, man. And what do you think we can expect to hear next from you? Well, we're working on uh, the Space Force album, which is kind of like the new Analog Brothers. And then we got, you know, we're working on some some label stuff. We're going to be putting out a lot of a lot of records that we've, had in our camp that's been sitting over the years so we're gonna just put out a smorgasbord of stuff next year and so yeah we're just gonna you know i think you know at 50 and like with the 50th anniversary and all that i think like now guys from my era are super recharged like we feel brand new i know i do like i don't feel like i feel like now we can do anything we want like there's no no limit like and and we can compete with any you know uzi verts or anybody where we still can rock a stadium or rock a small club like you know so you know music is look if you can go to look the stones are going back out again they're 90 and they're gonna sell out arenas so let us guys we still wear fly clothes and tim's we still rocking. So that's more to come from our camp, a lot more. So that's, you guys are going to be blessed with a lot more music. We're not stopping. We're not slowing down. We're touring. You know, the team is back together, the, the A team and the shows are incredible and, you know, more stuff to come in 2024. I love it, man. And it's got to be surreal to be born, kind of be born with hip hop. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's awesome. And I feel like the best way to close out this interview, we actually got, uh, Keith to the left of me. I don't know if he's asleep or not. (laughs) 
Um, so what up, Keith? <laughs> I want you know to to close out our interview here. I want you to say something nice about uh, your friend Mark Alive. Uh-huh. You got anything nice to say about Mark Alive? Oh, okay. well, Mark is a great hype man for years. You know, he go on the road with me, and you know he knows the songs. It's easier, it makes the show more easy. You know, I sometimes tend to have different people, but you know, Mark is like the person, and Dennis, you know. And Mark and Dennis, and that's what we have, and and everybody else sometimes full ends, but you know, that's the main people. And Mark makes the show easy, and plus, you know, we know the routine, and we put the show together. Mark does the sound check more than any other hype man that I have, so it's more to it than being a hype man. It's about knowing the lyrics, and it's about making sure the stage sound good. Love it. You can go back to bed. <laughs> yeah, no problem, man. If you need NyQuil or anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so Mark, have you got any kind of final message for anyone who may be watching? Um, like I said, a lot more music coming from our camp. Um, you know, thank you for supporting, you know, Cool Keith and Ultra Magnetic and the underground universe for all these years and and keeping the real shit alive and um yeah, you know, we're just getting started. That's really it. Thank you. Love to hear it, Mark. Really appreciate the Thank interview, man. Yes. Thank you. All, All right. of his links will be down below. Yeah. 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 Yeah.